Good evening, beloved brothers and sisters in Yahusha. This is Linda Rose Spirit Song. And I'm going to finally wrap up the book by Jesse Penn Lewis titled Thy Hidden Ones. This is part seven. I will be doing the last two chapters, chapter 22 and chapter 23. So let's go ahead and get started. Leaning on Yahusha's bosom, one whom Yahusha loved, John 13, 23. Leaning on the beloved, who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 5. A pause, and again, the daughters of Yerushalayim exclaim, Who is this? As they behold the Hidden One emerging from her time of rest in the well-beloved's care, they see her now leaning upon her beloved, for she has learned that she can only keep in step with him as she leans upon him every moment in utter dependence and helplessness. It is possible that in the activity of service, pressed on every hand by the claims of quote-unquote open doors, or by the gathering, gathering of the precious fruits, she had failed to keep sacred her hours of waiting on her, Master, Yahuwah. In the full assurance of union with him, and in the abundance of his life working through her, she may have thought that he would supply her need and renew her strength in the midst of busy service. This he never fails to do when the claims are real needs, but warped and unreasonable claims come that are not of him. Souls who seek to draw nourishment from the earthen vessel instead of from Yahuwah Elohim himself, questions from hearts that should learn to trust and not attempt to trace the dealings of Elohim until he pleases to reveal his purposes. Calls from believers who have sought guidance after making their own plans. All these things come to those who faithfully seek to be the servants of all. The hidden one must learn that the pressure of the needs of others, fancied or real, must never intrude upon the sacred hours of waiting on Yahuwah Elohim. Active service especially demands these times alone with Yahuwah. The master needed them. For do we not read, great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed? But he withdrew himself in the deserts and prayed. Luke 5, 15 through 16. In the face of all the real needs, he withdrew. Nay, child of Elohim, it is not a waste of time. It is economy, for our service is fruitless without the full power of his abundant life which must be renewed at his feet day by day. As soon as there is a sense of pressure, it is all important that we should get alone with our Abba Yahuwah. The claims may make this seem impossible, but he can make the way clear if we know our need and our will to retire from the vineyards as soon as we hear his call. Leaving his work to him who alone is responsible recognizing that he is in control. The well-beloved in his watchful keeping of his loved one saw that she did not understand her need. So he allured her, allured her into the wilderness of rest by hiding himself for a moment. Chapter 8, verse 1 through 3. Simply to draw her attention from the vineyards to seek instruction at his feet. We have seen how she regained her resting place while her beloved speaks for her to the busy daughters of Yerushalayim, forbidding them to stir her up until he pleased. Leaning upon her beloved, to bring the soul to entice reliance and dependence upon him is the end of Yahuwah, James 5.11. The purpose of his very dealings, whether in the valley or on the mountaintop, leaning upon her beloved. This is the outcome of the life of union. What life more simple or more blessed? 
In this privileged position, the hidden one comes forth to be, to be renewed to a renewed service and activity, leaning upon her beloved to be taught by him. The well beloved's instructions concerning the earthen vessel. Under the apple tree, I awakened thee. Chapter 8, verse 5. While she leans upon her beloved, he answers the cry of her heart for instruction in the mysteries of the kingdom. He reminds her of her natural condition and of the days when she was first awakened and born into the family of Elohim. She must never, because of his abounding grace toward her, make the mistake of thinking herself to be a heavenly vessel. The treasure of Messiah is lodged in a body of fragile clay, that the excellency of the power may manifestly be of Elohim and not of her. Moreover, she will need to be kept full of the divine life. If her own peculiar personal characteristics are to be controlled and used by her or his Yahu Elohim, it is not enough to know that the beloved dwells within. Those of his body will need every moment as a vessel to be kept environed by the presence of Yahuwah, in him to live and move and to have our being. Acts 17, 28. If the shape of the vessel is not to hinder the manifestation of him who graciously consents to make him or her a habitation of Elohim by the Spirit. Concerning the jealousy of Elohim, set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is hard as the grave. The flashes thereof are flashes of fire, a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. Chapter 8, verse 6 through 7. The first words are often quoted as spoken by the bridal soul. But following those of the well-beloved about her natural condition, they have far more significance if taken as coming from him. Seeing her deep, deep need of him, he cries, Set me as a seal upon thine heart. The love that is strong as death, and which led him to the death of the cross, breaks forth in jealous yearning that this soul for whom he died should be wholly kept for him in heart and hand. His jealousy over his redeemed one is hard as the grave. He cannot overlook one spot or wrinkle in a member of his bride. Therefore, he will deal with all that is of earth in her with flashes of fire, so that she may be as pure as gold and as transparent as glass in the day when she will be one of those presented to himself as a sharer of his throne. The well-beloved tells his hidden one that no flood of trail or sorrow can ever quench his love, just as no riches can buy it. The jealousy of Elohim is as a most vehement flame over each blood-bought soul, therefore constrained with the love of Elohim. Paul, the Apostle Paul, said to the Corinthians, I am jealous over you with a jealous jealousy of Elohim, for I espoused you to one husband that I might present you a, as a pure virgin to Messiah, Yahusha, 2 Corinthians 11, 2. O child of Elohim, hidden in his heart, abide in this deep love of the eternal Yahuwah Elohim. Listen to his words. Continue ye in my love, John 15, 9, and welcome the flashes of fire proceeding from that love the fire that seeks to purify you as fine gold. Dwell in Elohim, who is a consuming fire. Thus shall you see the king of his, in his beauty and dwell on high. Chapter 23. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, we have boldness toward Elohim. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. 1 John 3, 21 through 22. Communion with the well-beloved. We have a little sister. What shall we do for our sister? We will build upon her battlements of silver. We will enclose her with boards of cedar. Chapter 8, 8 through 9. 
Leaning upon her beloved, what privileges belong to the hidden one, he whispers to her, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask whatsoever you will, and it shall be done unto you, John 15, 7. And she replies, we have a little sister. What shall we do for our sister? She may speak to him freely now about all who are upon her heart, assured that they are upon his heart too. He replies, we will build upon her battlements or enclose her with boards as if to say, she shall be dealt with according to her need. Leave her now to me. It is sufficient to know that when he beareth, we have the pet petitions we desire of him. Did not Abraham's intercourse with Elohim so hold back the judgment of Sodom that Lot was saved? Abraham himself did not need to go in eager haste to his deliverance. Rather, as he stood before Yahuwah Elohim, the angel messengers were sent. Thus may the children of Yahuwah gain admittance to the sanctuary and in fellowship with the living, all-powerful Yahuwah Elohim place such battlements around their loved ones as will guard and keep them unknown to themselves until in his fullness of time they are brought to know Yahuwah Elohim. Thus will the well-beloved teach his hidden ones to use the privilege of their position and learn to move the hand that moves the world. As they stand in fellowship with him in intercession, Yahuwah word, for the people. The King's Business Solomon had a vineyard. He let out the vineyard unto, uh, vineyard unto keepers. My vineyard, which is mine, is before me. Thou, O Solomon, shalt have the thousand, and those that keep the fruit, two hundred. Chapter 8, verse 11 through 12. The soul leaning upon her beloved finds him a skillful teacher. He first had to make her know herself and her position as an earthen vessel. Then the jealous love of Yahuwah Elohim who owned her. Now he turns to the practical affairs of life that she may learn to be a faithful steward in the smallest details. The life of union with him must be manifested in every word, look, and action. She must be permeated with the heavenly spirit even in that which appears to be of the smallest moment. Yahusha is faithful to all who truly watch for his teaching and leading every moment of the day. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, Psalm 32, 8. May be true of the way in the least or in the greatest matter, and souls who are leaning upon the beloved become intuitively sensitive as to what is worthy of Elohim, and are given increasingly to know the mind of Yahuwah in the practical actions of daily life. What has been called the secular part of life now becomes the outward business of the king. The purchased one is manifestly in the confidence of her well-beloved. His interests are hers. She knows that he has other vineyards entrusted to keepers to whom he has said, occupy till I come. But she turns to the vineyard entrusted to her as it lies before her. She is conscious that he must teach her how to be skillful in business so that he may have his rightful revenues. It was said of David after his anointing by the Spirit that he was skillful in business, 1 Samuel 16, 18. And Daniel, who had such great visions of Elohim, was no, no visionary in practical life. As we are shown by the fact that his enemies could find no occasion of fault in him in the king's affairs committed to his care. King Solomon must have his rightful revenues, says his fellow worker. But her knowledge of her master, her Adonai, Yahusha, and her enlightened judgment as to what is worthy of Elohim tells her that she must be generous, as well as just, to those who gather the fruits under her control. She knows that the king would exact no revenues at their cost, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. He must not be dishonored by their being underpaid, or else they, in their turn, will be unable to act worthily of him. Moreover, there are eternal consequences attached to her stewardship. If she is to reign with her master, her Yahusha, she must be taught how to judge the smallest matters. For the saints shall judge the world, 1 Corinthians 6, 2. 
She must be trained to apply the laws of the heavenly kingdom as set forth in the Sermon on the Mount to the practical circumstances of her life. The King as Counselor Thou that dwellest in the gardens, the companions hearken for thy voice. Cause me to hear it. Chapter 8, verse 13. The Hidden One has learned to walk very silently with her Elohim. The talkative disposition of early days has passed away. She has no desire now to blaze abroad the secrets of his love. The life hidden in the heart of Elohim is a very deep and a very silent one. When Elohim speaks, he speaks with a purpose, and the soul is learning to partake of his divine silence. She cannot talk now for the sake of talking. Neither can she listen to or pass on to her neighbors the thousand petty trifles that so easily impress those whose minds are set upon earthly things. The well-beloved dwells in the garden of her soul. She tells him that the companions are eagerly listening for his voice through her. Will he please cause her to hear it? so that she may speak only when he speaks. She craves to be but a voice which passes away, leaving the living word and the hearts around. He has promised to be a wonderful counselor. If she will permit the government of her whole being to remain upon his shoulders, he will cause her to know the way wherein she should walk as she goes forth every moment, leaning upon her beloved. The heart cry of the bridal soul. Make haste, my beloved, and be thou like a gazelle upon the mountains. Chapter 8, verse 14. She longs for the day of his appearing to the world, for that glorious day when he shall be marveled and at in all them that believe. Therefore, in unison with the eternal spirit, she makes intercession according to the will of of Elohim and praise with deep desire. Make haste, my beloved, for she is looking for and earnestly desiring, hastening the coming of the day of Yahuwah Elohim and is according to his promise looking for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. 2 Peter 3, 12 to 13. Clothed in fine linen, bright and pure, the redeemed ones are then presented to their master, their Yahusha, with no spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Ephesians 5.27 Made ready by him in the fire, they are clear as crystal, transparent as glass. The body of humiliation has been made like unto the glorious body of our Yahusha. It is luminous with the light of the Lamb which shines through undimmed. Even now, they are nothing but capacities through which Elohim may manifest his glory. The glorious destiny of the bride is to be a tabernacle of Elohim, that he may dwell among men. The nations shall walk by the light given through the bride city, from the throne of Elohim, in the midst thereof will flow a pure river of life, and there shall be crops of fruit. Revelation 22, 2. Ample provision for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more anything accursed. Revelation 22, verse 3. The bride reigns with her master Yahusha unto the ages of ages. All in all, in his new creation, the glory of Elohim shall see, and the lamp for that light eternal, the bride of the Lamb, shall be a golden lamp in the heavens that all may see and adore, the Lamb who was slain and who liveth, who liveth forevermore. Yahuwah Elohim is all in all. That, my beloved brothers and sisters, in the faith, in Messiah, our Redeemer, concludes this, the book, Thy Hidden Ones, by Jesse Penn Lewis. For those of you who were not able to hear the, the, the parts that I shared previous to this part seven, 
I have on my playlist, um, it says The Hidden Ones by Jesse Penn Lewis. So if you want to listen to the rest of the parts, part one through six, please go back and check those out. I would encourage you to do so. I am praying about, now that I've completed this series in this book, The Hidden Ones, Jesse Penn Lewis has two other books that I had purchased and they have much to do with spiritual warfare. I'm praying about possibly um, doing them as well. So we'll see how things go. I do have some things that um, the Holy Spirit's been giving me these past couple of days. Some more messages, some studies that um, I spent some time today putting one of them together and I have another one to put together. I will share with you what they are and I'm hoping for when the Father will reveal when he wants me to put them forth. I'm not too sure if they're going to be a live stream or a premiere or just just something I'm going to record like I do with some of my other some of my other recordings. Um, I'm also thinking that possibly this Friday I was talking to another sister and um, doing a live stream um let me let me let you know what what the title of this will be i found this website and uh, let me get to it here it is it is titled how to keep the shabbat holy and this was a very very practical there's a lot of things in here that were very, very practical that I believe will be helpful to some of you who have been asking the questions like, how do I keep the Sabbath? Um, can you give me some ideas, some practical things of how to keep the Sabbath and how to keep it holy for those who have never stepped out or are really, really thinking about doing this? Because you know that's what he commands you. That's the fourth commandment to keep the Sabbath and to keep it holy. So as I was talking to the sister, I, I just got that strong sense that this is something I need to do a live stream about and read to you. Um, and to those of you who want to get a, a gain a, a greater understanding, and if there are those of you who want to be a part of this and want to be a part of the live chat and you have any questions, you want to come into the room and you want to know more about it and how we can help others come into this understanding about how to keep the Shabbat holy. Those of you who have been walking and keeping the Shabbat, you can share some of the stuff that, that's been going on with your life. I open that up and see what the Holy Spirit wants to do. So I'm um, thinking that um, if I do do a live stream tomorrow evening, it will most likely be... Um, around 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I know that's going to be late. There are going to be those of you in the UK that may not be able to hear this, except for Brother Will, if you happen to be up in the middle of the night like you were for the last live stream. You know you're always welcome, brother. <laughs> but um, I'm hoping that for those who can be a part of this and who really want to know about about the Sabbath and, and, and you, you've had some questions and you, you're looking for some answers, some practical ways of keeping the Sabbath, this will be a good opportunity for you to partake in this and be a part of this. And also, please keep me in prayer. I have, um, I want to share with you what he put on my heart. I put this one together, finished this one. It was all scribbly and now I got it all organized. And this is going to be titled, Pass the Salt, in word and in deed, with excellence and with grace. So I finished that up before I did this, this recording to finish out Thy Hidden Ones. And the other um, study, a message that he wants me to put out that I'm going to be putting together tomorrow, it's titled, In Times of Trouble. And it's taken out of Psalm 6, verse 2 through 3, verse 10. Psalm 7, verse 16. Psalm 10, verse 1, 7, and 14. And I'm going to be going into um, what trouble means. 
Um, also, we will see, particularly from Psalm 6 and Psalm 10, ways and how we need to pray in these times of trouble. It kind of lays that out, how to pray. And also, I'm going to be going into uh, scriptures that are relating to these attributes that describe you who is people, such as those who will walk in humility, what it means to be fatherless, the oppressed, poor and needy. So these are things that I'm going to be delving into with this um, study message. And I'll be putting that together tomorrow. So I appreciate your prayers on that. And um, I hope you were all very, very blessed by our sister Octavia, her testimony. It was so powerful. And uh, just want to reinforce, this is why I believe there are those that are reaching out now who, who want to be able, who want to keep the Sabbath, who want to start honoring and keeping to his ways. Because from hearing Octavia's testimony and my testimony, is similar in the sense that as soon as I started to come into my Hebraic understanding of keeping the Shabbat, keeping his Torah, his commandments, that's when I began to experience much deliverance that, that I've been needing for years that I couldn't seem to overcome. And by doing this, I received the blessing of much deliverance, just like as we've heard from our Octavia, our sister Octavia, what has taken place in her life the salvation of her husband, the, the healing that took place, the amazing healing that took place with her son who, who um, you know, who was autistic. And now he's, he's just really come a long way in, in the healing, what the father's been doing with this family. So it's very exciting that she got to share this. And I'm hoping that this will encourage you all to pursue and go in this way because it really is a blessing. You are truly blessed. This is not a means of salvation, but it's what we do because we are saved. And when we do these things, we truly are blessed. When we keep them, we have his protection. We have his provisions. And he preserves us. And he fights our battles. Because that's what he said with the Israelites. That if you do these things that I command you to do, I will defeat your enemies. So this is these are promises that are for us. They weren't just for them in the... Uh, in the original covenant, this is for us as well. This continues because we are part of the Israel of you, Elohim, that has continued, has not been replaced. But now Yahushua has, has, has brought these things forth, fulfilled these things, and has taken those things that have been revealed and have been written on stone, and now they are in our hearts. And he's given us a spirit by which we can now walk these things out. And for those who do, you really do become blessed you enter a place of such joy and such peace and fulfillment that you would not experience otherwise. I know because I lived that way outside of that for many years. And being on this side of it, I can concur that it's something you want to pursue and pray and seek up a father on. So with all of that said, beloved brothers and sisters in Yahushua, the Messiah, I want you to know that I love you. I'm praying for you. And I hope that if you can join with me tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that's uh, 8 p.m. Mountain, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope that you can join me tomorrow for this special presentation having to do with how to keep the Sabbath holy. So until we come together again, my beautiful and precious forever family, I want to bid you all shalom. Do you ever wonder why the moment you wake up, first thing you say is, I love you, Abba. Know this one thing, that somewhere in this world there are others saying the same thing, pouring all their love to their Elohim. Her fragrance, you're also good. Your name is all poured forth, therefore the maidens love you. The heavens are proclaiming the steam of hell, and the expanse is declaring the work of his hand. The earth belongs to Yahuwah and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Now the word of Yahuwah came to me saying,
Before I found you in the womb, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I set you apart. I appointed you prophet for nations. Then Yahuwah put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And Yahuwah said to me, See, I have put my words in your mouth.